The encounter with Oranax is definitely a tricky one, and frankly, some player characters think, hmm, maybe I'll just fight the big dragon. That's a bad idea. <laughs> You're gonna be doing that at level five, I believe, which just, it ain't that good. It ain't that good at all of an idea. I believe that the encounter with Oranax is something that DMs can generally struggle with, especially with what I've read in the book. The book doesn't offer that many alternative solutions beyond kind of specific things that the party might not entirely think of. Most parties are going to go down into the vault and they're going to say, hmm, okay, we're just going to go in with the keys that we need and then bada bing bada boom, we're in. But they're not really going to think, hmm, maybe I should bring Vajra Safar. I'm not really sure that would occur in anyone's head. Or like, I should bring Huam, or I should bring frickin' any person, because they're gonna want to do it themselves. They're not gonna want the help of any other NPC unless they're one of the keys. And that's the first thing that I think I need to talk to you about here with uh, Oranax. Make one or two of the keys make the social encounter easier, because it's not gonna... It's not gonna happen otherwise. Like, a, a party might genuinely think to try and convince him that, you know, the, the money should be safely returned. Most of the keys that I'm looking at here don't encourage you to get, like, pawns to discuss. There's a couple that do, but you're not really gonna think to, you know, do it. Like, get Vajra Safar to cast Conjure Celestial. And an animated construct. Uh huh. There's not much here that would encourage them. And I mean, there's a lot of cool, like, callbacks here, you know? To, like, old moments. So a drunken elf, if they did the Zentran quest line, a silvered warhammer, which doesn't pertain to any sort of quest, uh, a severed drow hand, once again, possibly the, the drow that you fight with the Zentrum quest, it it all seems a little weird and vague. And I genuinely think, yeah, you can just make your own. I think that perhaps maybe uh, a wise man or like a wise man for like Hlam, obviously, and then for, you know, maybe Mert, um, a bombastic spy a bombastic lord I, I don't know something like that something that will get them to maybe bring one of them down to help a little bit now i don't like it that the module does that honestly i think that the players should just be able to do it by themselves and they can it's difficult it's real difficult like i doubt they're going to be able to um, the DCs for the checks to, like, deceive or persuade. There's a DC 18 persuasion check. There is kind of like the default. Or Oranax gets to make an insight check against everyone's deception. And even if one person fails, Oranax determines that they're lying, etc, etc. It's a real sticky situation. And frankly, they don't have to succeed it. They could walk away. Oranax still talking in his dwarf form because that's what happens unless you know combat breaks out won't really want to fight him just say you know get lost you know and it's really hard to get him to budge so it's entirely possible that the party is just going to kind of boop 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 out of there which is then when you run the big old final battle Oranax is again it's a really sticky situation because the players are going to want to win, right? They're going to get in a situation and they've put themselves in it. They think this dwarf man is the final boss, you know? That's the mentality you think. You've gone through this little dungeon, this little final dungeon. You fought a black pudding or something and boom, now you're in the boss room. It looks like a boss room. It looks like it could be a boss room uh, with all the money in it as well. But, you know... 
it's set up to feel like a boss fight so that, you know, their expectations are shattered and they instead have a different encounter to go through, which I think is cool. It's a more persuasive way of going about it. Just really difficult to get into budge. I think that maybe you should add a few more pawns t for the party to place. Perhaps giving them some level of evidence that funds were embezzled. Or maybe goodwill in the form of money. Maybe not. Hmm. It's a really sticky situation, and frankly, I think you should add more clauses of success for the party to work towards in the social encounter so that, you know, they can come out with what they want. The 500,000 gold. They want that shit. Oranax isn't going to fight the party, right? Not going to choose to, at least. And if they do try and fight him, they're fucked. Honestly, if they're a party of even 10 level 5 characters, they're still fucked, because Oranax has legendary actions. Only two other people, well there's actually three to my memory, the only three other people are Hlam, the Xanathar, and Jalaxel that get legendary actions. I don't believe anyone else in the module does, or any sort of creature does, really. Maybe if you free Galore? Maybe Aberrations have legendary actions? They might. In any case, Oranax is a very tough foe for a party to fight, and I think that you should heavily emphasize that he really does not want to fight, and that frankly he feels remorse, you know, like, uh, if I if I were to, if you guys attack me, then you're all just gonna die, and I'm really sorry, but it's just gonna happen, um, etc, etc. I think that straight up, you could warn them in character, like, Oranax, I, I am a very powerful man, this staff is not just for show, you know? Uh, oh yeah, can you make can it make you breathe fire? And they're like, uh, no, but I can. Whoa, boom. Um, the fire damage for an adult gold dragon, I believe, is 55 on average. It's 10d10. That can just poof, kill the party right there. It's <laughs> it's something that's for sure. So don't get him in a fight at all. I imagine he would be remorseful if a fight did happen. Like, some parties are murder hobo is shit, you know, you get me? And they, they see the big, they, they see the dwarf man guarding it, and they're like, let's just stab him, and then, oh, uh, and then he expands into the most terrifying creature in the universe. And then they're like, well, we're dead. Oops. So, gold dragons themselves are actually a lot of fun. Frankly, um, when I was first starting out on D&D, uh, I didn't really think that the good dragons were useful, right? But they are, are just as fun to play as the bad guys for, you know, a number of reasons. I mean, for one, they're much nicer. They want to help people and, you know, save the world and they have moral values. They can offer more interesting encounters beyond... They swoop down from the skies and... And I mean, they could because, you know... If you enter their territory and just kind of keep going, even after they drop a few warning signs, maybe they're like, all right, poof, get out. That sort of stuff. Uh, but they definitely have a lot of narrative value. And frankly, having a gold dragon to parlay with at the end of the campaign is a lot of fun. In the next video, I will talk about the final fight where all of them will kind of... All of the factions and enemies and stuff will all get together and have a big old fight, you know? I am kind of slowly realizing with the Waterdeep series that I am running out of things to talk about because I have ran technically all of it, right? But I've only ever properly got through chapter three. I never did chapter four at least not recently. I feel like I did, but extremely quickly rushed it, you know? And I, I'm i not sure how much stuff I can keep saying. I definitely have some more ideas, so stuff like how to continue this campaign beyond fifth level if you don't just want to swap to another module. Stuff like how you could, more interestingly, tie it into Mad Mage and make the two linked a bit more, etc, etc. But I feel like the sort of advice I want to give here is, you know, out of the book stuff. Like, I, I talk about stuff that the book doesn't talk about. Uh, but with chapters three to f four, there ain't much I can really say. 
I've technically gone over chapters five to eight, and people have recommended for our thousand sub special I do a, a, a t t tour of Waterdeep as Volo. That could be fun as hell. Um, but I am slowly running out of ideas. So if you have any more, please leave them in the comments or join my Discord and tell me there. Otherwise, I'm going to stop making Waterdeep videos. The power is in your hands. Um, make sure you also like and subscribe so that we know that, you know, you're watching it and you're engaging. Um, subscribing will let you know that, believe it or not, we do other videos. So yeah, go ahead and do that. It will definitely help us out a lot. In any case, thank you all for watching. See you in the next one. I said earlier that I freaking didn't know if there was gold in there. That's the whole plot of the fucking module. <laughs>